It is I, the Chompy Mage, and we invited Andrew out to our studio at Toys for Bob to learn the secrets of Trap Team. But he is not a Chompy, so I don't like him, and I'm not going to tell him anything. Me neither. So, thank you for joining us. It's a great pleasure to be here. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Sure. My name is Paul Ritchie, and I'm the studio head here at Toys for Bob. And we're a video game developer. We invented the Toys to Life genre with Skylanders. And this year, uh, we're bringing out a new Skylanders game uh, called Skylanders Trap Team, in which, for the first time, you get to actually capture villain characters and pull them into the real world and contain them inside toys and then play with them. So let's talk a little bit about Toys for Bob. It's 25 years old this year. Um, how did you start the company? Why did you start the company? Tell us the history. Well, we started Toys for Bob 25 years ago, um, and it was just the two of us, Fred Ford and, and myself. And we did it, actually, because we both needed comp the, the other's talent. Um, I was a game designer. He was a programmer. And we had each made games for a number of years. But we decided we wanted to start uh, a new team. So we wanted to uh, work with someone who had sort of complementing talent. And that was when we began working on a science fiction game called Star Control. And we both were huge science fiction fans and strategy game fans. And so we decided to blend together these two interests to create Star Control. That led to Star Control 2. And then we found we needed some assistance. You know, amazingly, we could do most of these games, but as they got larger and the discs got bigger and we started adding video, the team size just naturally started increasing, and sort of doubling in size. And then over the 25 years, we've stayed here in Nevada, but we've moved to larger and larger offices. And then when we joined the Activision family, and that's when we got the opportunity to create Skylanders, we moved into this crazy pirate ship slash tiki bar. Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about that. We, we've had a wander around today. Um, I explain exactly what you mean by that and where these ideas came from. Well, as part of Skylanders, you might be able to tell that we have a somewhat unrestrained imaginations, whether it's a talking artichoke with a tomato gun, or a ghost that eats other ghosts, or you know, giant tree beasts. So, so an eyeball, undead knight. We, we don't limit. Uh, too much our imaginations as long as it's something cool and, and kids like it or adults who like these kinds of games like me. Um, so we wanted to create an office that was inspiring, fun, silly, and had enough detail and imagination that as we walk around throughout the day, um, ideas just pop into our heads. And we allow each person to sort of decorate their cube however they want even if some of the people are in the tiki side, where oh, there's tiki canopies over all of the workspace and the walls are all natural bamboo, or over here where somehow we ended up inside a pirate ship. I don't know if we're the pirates or the, the captured people, but um, all of the walls are actually crafted by local carpenters and look like the sides of boats. Okay. Who is Bob? That is a mysterious question. Um, I should make up a story about that. The, what we tell people when they join us is that each person gets to come up with their own personal Bob. As long as you tell people that that is the absolute truth. That is, you know who it is. So, so each person has their own. I, I would ask you, for example, what would you say if you were asked who is Bob? That's a very good question. <laughs> I think I would need quite a lot of time to come up with something worthy of okay. an answer. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, for me, um, uh, uh, there's a, a character named J.R. Bob Dobbs, who is a mythical, inspirational leader. It's had something to do with the 70s. It was a long time ago, Very, but it was a really fun character. And um, also, there was a character that Bill Cosby always talked about, Bob. And so for me, those when I hear that word in my head, that's where it goes. But that, the idea came from, I believe my wife was saying, it's much better to create a space that people can project themselves into. and sort of find something that's uniquely relevant to them. And, and yet, if it's simple, uh, it seems playful and easy to approach. How do you come up with the ideas for the toys? Um, it, it's a couple of different ways. Uh, honestly, mostly I sit down with Iwe, um, our character illustrator, and, and uh, really he's the inventor of, of the Skylander characters. 
and we just talk about crazy ideas. And sometimes he'll show up with a new illustration that's completely out of his imagination, and that'll be the starting point for us sort of modifying it and involving it into a character. And then sometimes that'll be it. It'll be done. I think, um, for example, Food Fight was his initial illustration went through some modification, but the basic character was from the first illustration. Um, sometimes the, the actual designers who implement the Skylanders will come to us and they'll say, okay, we have a slot for a fire character. It needs to have a range attack. It needs to be a monster, and it has to be, you know, a quadruped. And so that starts defining this, this more contained space that we'll work within. But then we always refer back to, okay, what's every Skylander we've ever worked on or was created for Swap Force, and how do we make sure we don't exactly repeat something because we always want there to be something fresh about each character. What exactly makes a good Skylander? Well, that is an excellent question. Well, one, you have to look at it and wonder, I wonder what that guy does. Um, it can't be completely obvious. And there has to be sort of a funny twist. So, you know, you may see a large, giant, muscular guy with a cannon, but it's, it's, there's going to be something funny about that character. His, his head will be on fire, or, you know, his skin will be bright metallic red, or the cannon will be made of transparent crystal. Or, so we, you would never recognize one of these characters as existing natively within a serious fantasy series. Every character, you should be able to look at, get a clue as to what he does, but say, that's a Skylander, because only a Skylander would be so ridiculous as to only have an eyeball where his head should be. Uh, there's a proportion look. We, we have sort of a style guide that we've evolved over the years about how Skylanders feel in terms of weight and mass. Um, but honestly, anything goes. If you've got, if one has a good idea and you can make a compelling set of powers and this is a new kind of monster hero, there's always a chance. Walk us through the development process for both characters and the game. Obviously, you've talked a fair bit about the characters. The development process for the game uh, is actually fairly consistent with what you would do with other games, which is that you have someone create a concept, and that's usually a short few pages, which you can give to almost anyone that describes what's new and innovative and what the big challenges are going to be. Then that starts getting broken down into how you realize that in terms of modeling and animation and programming. And, and it's, a, it's a production very much like a film in which you have different disciplines entering in at different points in the production. And the team grows in size, and then as you get into post-production, it sort of narrows down to a, a few specific individuals. The toy side is the new piece. Um, and so that actually starts even before the game does. The development process for toys, because it involves manufacturing and, and international locations, goes ahead. So it's actually the toys that define the characters which we then implement. So some people ask, is it the toys or the, the in-game characters you create first? It's almost always the toys. Um, and they, as we've moved to more advanced consoles with more rendering capability, now the toy models and the in-game models are becoming almost exactly the same. So we actually start modeling the character uh, in 3D in, in a variety of packages like ZBrush. And then that gets moved right into the game. Uh, you know, we'll do some decimation to get to whatever is an appropriate resolution for the, the platform. I'm getting really technical ease there. Um, so, you know, there's, there are ways of making sure that you maintain the character and his personality and his animation, whether it's on the Wii all the way up to the Xbox One. Okay. And why should people play Skylanders? Because it's fun. Because it stimulates your imagination. Because it's fun to play with and own toys. I mean, these aren't like <laughs> utterly uh, unknown things, but there, there should be no reason besides you, you want to. I mean, you know, this is a choice you make that you, you today, you could go outside and play, you could watch TV, but no, you're going to go play Skylanders. So we have to inspire your imagination, and hopefully the toys are fun to play with away from the game. You know, we want you actually taking them back to the bedroom or to your office and uh, imagining what they're doing away from the game. And because this is the leading edge of what's happening in the world in terms of making objects smart and having them create a better 
experience in using toys, a better experience in using watches and phones. Um, it's really, because it's really interesting, uh, maybe that's more of the developer perspective, but you know, I grew up with toys, you grew up with toys, but they didn't get better as we played with them. Now they do. Um, and to me, that's just exciting to see what's happening today, and I can't wait to see what's happening five years out. Uh, we're thinking about it. But and you're not going to release no, any of it. Tell you today. It was so close, I was going to try. Um, obviously this year, the, the really big new thing for you guys is going to be the tablet version of the game. Um, we talked to Gamescom about that. Um, what's the feedback been from people who've heard about it? The feedback on the tablet version of Trap Team has been wonderful. Uh, it was, a, it was sort of a grand experiment. Um, no one has really tackled doing a triple A game, certainly with custom hardware that releases day and day with consoles. And the reason we did this was we knew our audience is not on one platform in one spot. And in fact, it's more complex now because we're on the front lines of new players entering the AAA game sphere, and they're coming not necessarily from a smaller, simpler console now, they're coming from tablet or they're coming from phone. And, and so we don't want to change their gaming habits. We want to meet them wherever they are. And so to do that, it required that we take the full Skylanders experience and realize it in the place they're comfortable, which is tablet. Now we will always have a big console business, but this year we're, we're doing whatever we can to make sure that the complete experience is available on tablet that it's easy to play, that it not only has a, you know, a portal and toy support and a controller that we've created and include in the starter kit, but that you can actually go for on-the-go play. You can play with on-screen controls if you want. We have two what we call instant characters who are just like regular Skylanders. You can level them up and give them upgrades. And you can seamlessly and in the same game experience transition from the full game with toys and portal just walk away and continue with on-screen controls and then come right back. So we're trying to give the full game experience and support all of the ways that kids play with tablets. What's your favorite Skylander? You know, that's a hard question um, because I, of course, love them all. Um, so I'm going to talk about Trap Masters because we have different categories of toys. Um, and I, I think for Trap Masters, it is probably uh, Headrush, who is conveniently sitting next to me. And that is because she is different than a lot of the characters we've created before. Um, she is all about the, the physicality of being big and strong and yodel. She's a yodeler. And we decided to go for the power of sort of yelling and singing and being bold and charging into things. And we sort of described her character as someone who just runs right into a situation and is utterly fearless. And that's, you know, that's the kind of person I want to be. It's the way I want my kids to be. But also I want to make sure that each of our toys, and I think all of us here at Toys for Bob, are dedicated to finding unique characters so that each person can find their favorite. All the Skylanders are, are not alike. They aren't simple variations. You know, you've got monsters and humans and silly characters and serious characters and scary characters and you know, men and women and crazy beasts. So we like to create uh, this sort of continuum of characters. Um, and then hopefully you'll find your favorite. Start there. What's been your proudest achievement in terms of like the studio and, and also um, Skylanders? I'd say my proudest achievement is getting letters and, and drawings from fans around the world. Um, my very proudest achievement is uh, kids who are you know, facing hardships in their lives, but who have found through Skylanders ways of remaining positive. And we've, you know, we've, we've been able to communicate with these kids and be inspired by them. Um, when you make a, a difference in someone's life uh, beyond just simple entertainment, that's, that changes you. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we really want to honor our fans. And you know, they, they put a lot of themselves into playing the game, uh, and we really are thankful to them. 
So I, I think it is the kids around the world and what they've said to us. What's next for you guys? <laughs> Dinner? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what we're working on now is actually finishing the current game, finishing Trap Team, making sure every last little bolt is tightened and, and characteristics are balanced. Then, some time off. Uh, it's been a, a good two-year session, and we need to make sure that we go into the future you know, with um, an entirely fresh perspective. But I can't wait to see, to be completely honest. I mean, we've been making games now, in my case, for 30-plus years, and it still is, if you were to give me a lottery ticket and say, Paul, you never have to work again, I would be back here. Um, you know, I might be wearing extra clothing or something, but uh, this is what I want to do, and this is, I think I can say that about most of the people in this industry, is that we are really fortunate to, to work in a field that we love. There are different editions of some of the Skylanders. You've got dark characters, you've got elites. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the differences and why they exist and what they mean? We release different versions of Skylanders, like the dark edition or like the elite characters. Uh, because some people like to collect specific characters, and some people love Trigger Happy. That they, they want to have more versions of that character. Now other people like to sort of go for a variety across different ways of looking at Skylanders. So, but we look at the collectible toy history, how collectible toys have been sold over the years, and we want to sort of use the very best practices that they've established. And, one thing that's clear about whether it's cars or robots is that people like having like the awesome new outfit, you know, um, and having the, the sort of shiny wheels or you know the custom spoilers, and so we look at our most popular characters and say how can we give you another look into this character, and I think that's where the Eons Elite, where we real this is sort of for dedicated collectors. Um, it comes with a, a much more durable container, a permanent case. And it's really for people who have an absolute favorite character and they want the best version of it and the fanciest, it's got more paint ops than any, more paint detail than any other uh, version of that character. And it's, we've amped up its characteristics in game. Um, and then the Dark Edition is just fun uh, to have a sort of a different look at the same character. So, like, we know of people who have tattoos of Dark Spyro, for example, because that really speaks to them about taking this heroic character but finding a somewhat shadowy angle on it. Um, and then sometimes it's just fun to slip in a sort of a little secret treasure into a box. So we have some of these characters that will just sneak in like a, you know, a solid gold chop chop or something like that. Um, and uh, it sort of likes like the golden ticket uh, from you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So there's a lot of reasons why we do those. Again, mostly it's to allow people different avenues into the collection experience. Thank you very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, this is the Chompy Mage. Thanks for watching, and why not subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen? I don't know what any of that means, but hopefully it made sense to somebody out there. Chompy Mage out!